We are finally seeing the consequences of letting AI pollute the internet, and it's kind of reminding people of pre-war steel. You may know that AI cannot train on self, it just becomes garbled nonsense. So as of right now, we actually do need people to train AI. Otherwise, the hallucinations will stack up and it'll start to decay. That also means that pre-AI data scavenged from the internet in places like the Wayback Machine is actually extremely valuable to companies trying to train AIs. Imagine this, an AI has a hallucination roughly 30% of the time. That hallucination says something ridiculous, or the words don't make sense in a sentence. Another AI picks it up, takes it as training, and those stack on each other until what you have is meaningless, and we're starting to see that already. Do remember that half of all internet traffic is just AI, and that's becoming worse as people are not actually looking at websites or trusting AI to parse data. That's also going to affect advertising, and we haven't seen what that will do to the tech bubble yet, but it'll be interesting. Why would advertisers pay so that an AI can scroll by and get that information. How does that relate to pre-war steel? Well, if you're not familiar, around the 1940s all the way into the 60s, we were doing atmospheric tests of nukes. That contaminated the atmosphere for at least 30 years, and because steel needs to be forged in the open air, it meant that that steel was then contaminated with radioactive isotopes. That is not a big problem if what you're making is going to be building materials. No, radioactive building materials are an entirely different topic, and we'll get there. That radiation became a problem if you're trying to make delicate machinery, things like Geiger counters, other scientific materials. If you're looking for neutrinos, you're going to need steel that's not emitting radioactivity. So they went ahead and used old battleships, retired ones. It became a little bit of an obsession, pre-war steel. Because we had so much of this stuff, it ended up being a near infinite supply of clean steel and many of it is still used today. Fortunately, because those isotopes lasted about 30 years, we are near normal levels of radioactivity in our atmosphere and ambiently in the environment, hoping nothing else happens. And yes, there are still places that are so contaminated, you could not get building materials from there. There's also, you know, the issue of not safely disposing of nuclear waste in the 2,500 barrels that were just dumped into the Atlantic. We don't know where they are, but those are probably still a problem. That and parts of New York are radioactive from runoff from a facility that was not properly maintained. But what about radioactive building materials? How does that happen? Now, there can still be issues with radioactive materials. Radioactive stuff exists naturally in the environment. Things like phosphate, cobalt-60 is going to be naturally radioactive. There's also radon gas and radium out there in the world. So if you ended up building stuff that was radioactive to begin with, it may not be healthy to work in that building. And that has happened. People have gotten cancers just from where they were working. And that also happens with radon gas. I have a home Geiger counter. I don't know about you, but I get a little paranoid about the stuff. Also, the places that had nukes tested on them at ground level, that's not typically done any longer unless we have a big problem, those places are indeed still radioactive and the consequences are still being seen. Sorry for the surprise history lesson. 